Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I got some odds and ends in the shop that I'd like to show you. It is cold out here. I think it's like four degrees. So let's go in there. At least it's warmer in there. And I'll show you what I got going on. Alright guys. Now, I've made a lot of progress on my indexing annual plate. At least, given the weather, I've made a lot of progress. And let me show you what I've done on it. And... I think it looks great. I painted it. I uh, did some machining operation on the front here. And let me bring you in a little closer to get you a better look because it's hard to tell from back there. But I really think it's nice and I want to show you what I've done. Alright. So I painted it Battleship Gray, which is one thing that I've done. And I think I've really done that out of order because uh, I should have finished all my machining operations before I ever worried about the appearance of this thing. But nonetheless, I couldn't help myself. So I painted it, and I really liked the, the color. I think it turned out great. I painted the, uh, the inside of the bezel here, and I fixed my vernier scale, my pointer, uh, to the casting. And all I used on it was a Loctite 641 for now. Now I am going to drill this and pin it, but uh, that'll be in the future. I also machined the front face here. Now this was just a rough casting before, and I machined it parallel with the front face here. That way, when I go to, you know, uh, dial this thing in, I can dial in from here or the front face. All right, guys, here's some pre-recorded cutting footage from about a week ago. All right, guys, now I've got this on the machine, and before I go into all this, I want to show you a little sneak peek of an upcoming video that I'm going to do in the future. Now this is, has been annoying me for quite some time and I'm going to bring you over here and show you what it is. Alright, see behind there? It's a little dark, but that is my American Rotary phase converter. And I'm sure that a lot of my longtime uh, viewers have heard the high pitched high-pitched squealing every now and then and that's what it is it uh, it really gets uh, harmonic sometimes let me turn it off here and see if it'll do it oh yeah that is annoying especially if you're trying to film so that's going to be an upcoming fix and I I'll give you all the juicy details uh, about uh, uh, the path that I've taken to try to get it repaired and stuff later. But let's go in and get this thing set up. And I'm using my 196 here to just dial in the foot just to make sure when I cut this surface here that I'm coming you know, straight across and that I'm not cutting this part at an angle. Not that it really matters, but we want to get it close. And to hold this... Of course, the front side of this casting that's sitting on the machine table, I machined that in the lathe, and it is true. So, I need to hold this, but I don't want to hold it on the painted surfaces. The surface where these two clamps here are clamped as a non-painted machine surface, but uh, everything else is painted because I'm um, notoriously doing things out of order. But what I've got in order to hold this is I took a piece of square stock in the lathe and I turned down both ends and I'm going to cut this guy in half I'm going to stick it in these holes and then use toe clamps off the table to hold it down that way I don't have to clamp on my painted surface and ruin the work that I've done so far but there's still a lot of work to go on this and I'm sure by the time I'm done handling it that it won't look as nice as it does right now I'm going to go cut this in half on the saw clamp it down, and then I'm going to bring you back when we're ready to cut. I think I've done like uh, three passes total in this, and I just wanted to get it to where you know, I could indicate it off the surface, and you know, it was parallel with the front face. I'm going to have to take one more pass, probably. It's pretty far out. Right. 
30 thousandths, 40 thousandths out. Just from high spot to high spot, maybe a little more than that. When I clamped uh, the piece down with the uh, hole through or through hole clamps that I made there, uh, I didn't want to apply a lot of pressure to it, just enough to hold it down to the table because I didn't want to put any twist uh, in the surface there. It, uh, it really took a lot more time to get this set up than it did to actually make the cut, which is you know, your case with most machining operations. But use brass under the sh under the clamps up at the top of the casting, and just to try to put enough pressure on it to hold it down, but not enough to you know, twist the casting. I got it within uh, I think it's five tenths from you know over eight and a half inches which is pretty good um, it's not exactly what I want you know I'll probably scrape it in a little closer than that uh, uh, in the future but uh, we got a lot to do till then but I just wanted to show you that I really think it turned out nice I'm really happy with the looks of it you know I think that in the future that I'm gonna make multiple faces for this indexing angle plate one will probably be a small four jaw that'll fit on here, and then maybe a pallet with a, an array of bolt holes in it that I can uh, clamp my work to. I, even in the future, or even <laughs> in the future, I may even make a new slug for this, the center of the whole center portion here that rotates, um, and make one that's hollow where I can do like a bore through hole, like your hole on the spindle of a lathe. And that's where I'm at on the angle plate. I think it turned out really nice so far, but there's still a lot of work to do. Let me show you a little bit of your mail that I got. And it's really great stuff. And I want to talk about uh, one of the items in detail. Okay, item number one on the viewer mail. And uh, which is really, you know, amazing to me. I've got some really great viewers out there who really, you know, seem to want to help and, and I really appreciate it to, you know, to the fullest extent. Um, uh, my viewers, you know, are the only reason, of course, that I do it, you know, uh, this YouTube thing. You know, it makes me no money, so I really want to just thank the viewers, just for watching, even. You're watching and commenting, that's, that's the most important thing. But anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Um, a viewer, a really nice viewer, um, Pete, or Peter, uh, sent me a lot of reamers. Now, not all of these, all these reamers here, these, and some, and a few of these already had, and I have a whole lot of reamers, or not a whole lot, but I have quite a few reamers uh, to begin with, but not a lot of straight shank reamers, so he sent me a whole lot of these reamers, and a lot of them are in spectacular shape. Um, they were sent pretty much loose, um, you know, this is the factory sleeve that most of them, most of reamers will come in. So they were loose, and I didn't have any way to safely store them without banging them up against each other. And for most people who use reamers, they know that they are a precision instrument. And all it takes is one ding on uh, one of the flutes or uh, edges to enlarge a hole and, you know, make the reamer not drill the hole or bore the hole that it, ream the hole that it, uh, that it should. So, what I did, and I put this on Instagram, I asked for advice on what I should do uh, to protect these reamers. I got several things from heat shrink, um, from, to tape, you know, to several things, and, I, and to just regular wax. And that's what I ended up using, just regular old cannon wax or candle wax. Uh, all I did was heat the wax up and dip the ends in. Now this is not near as good as the standard machinist uh, wax like this one here that they use to protect resharpened end mills or reamers. Uh, the standard stuff peels off extremely easy uh, and it's a little more resistant to chipping than the standard wax. But 
nonetheless, it works great. Uh, it peels off relatively easy, and uh, a couple dips in hot wax uh, seems to, to shield them pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with the way that they are uh, protected. Because these things will sit in the box, you know, for who knows how long before you'll need in each individual one. So they need to be protected in the meantime. So. And another thing that I did was organize my reamers. Now, I hadn't done this even with the reamers that I owned previously. Uh, I had not went through them and or, you know, documented the sizes that I have. It's hard to choose what size hole you ream or whatnot if you don't know if you have that reamer or not. So I went through and I made me a little uh, notebook here and I used my label maker, which is a great thing in the shop. Um, and I think that uh, everybody should have one. I'm really trying to implement it around the shop quite a bit. That way you can easily see, uh, you know, what, uh, what the item is and it looks professional, at least in my opinion. And I just went through here and wrote down my sizes. Now, that's pretty simple, but it took a while. And also, instead of squinting some of these small reamers, I mean, you can't, you just can't see the, the writing on them. Some of them, the writing is, you know, worn off or whatnot. So I went through and I measured each individual reamer. First, I will looked and seen what number it was because it's kind of hard to measure a reamer exactly because they're intense. Um, but I went through and I tagged each one with a really high quality tape and a permanent sharpie and that way I can put these things in the drawer I can go through look at my book see if I have what I need and then I can go through and pretty quickly see if uh, or where that reamer is here's one more thing that uh, that uh, Peter sent me and he originally was going to send me some half inch tool steel and he did that along with the, quite a few reamers which I really appreciate like I said but uh, several pieces of 3 8 I got three pieces of 3 8 here two 6 inch non cut pieces of uh, circle C and that's nice um, I don't have any tool steel that long in this size so that was a real real bonus another piece of Momax here piece of 7 16 uh, five pieces of half inch and then a piece of five eighths which was super nice of him and really really appreciate it uh, this stuff will go in the box and uh, and I know that uh, for sure I'll use it um, I have two of these reamers here now these were reamers that I already owned now these are quarter inch per foot you know machine reamers <laughs> and of course I have the size reamer right above the size that I truly need because I need to ream out the pin on my clapper box. Let me bring you over here and show you. All right. Now, this clapper swings on a pin. This is a tapered pin that runs through here that, that the clapper hinges on, and it is a quarter inch per foot. And I think it's three-eighths at the bottom end here, and I forget uh, closer to half inch on this end. But uh, I don't have that reamer, and I need to get that because this pin is a little loose and I really would like to do a uh, it's a little loose on this end I really would like to do a video on uh, repairing these clappers because that is a common problem and it's pretty easily fixed but there's a special way that you do it in order not to in order for the clapper to swing freely but the pin to lock up in the housing so I really need to get that reamer so I'll probably try to find me one of those but uh, but that may be a future video that you guys see me repairing this clapper it's not bad but it's uh, bad enough to where I need to fix it before it wears this whole you know egg shape so that's a that's a little job you may see in the future all right let me show you what I use over a drill chuck in the tailstock of my lathe when I run reamers now most of you guys will already know why I don't use a standard drill chuck in my tailstock of my lathe, and the main reason is because I've got an old lathe, an old lathe that's got some wear in the tailstock. And what that does is that puts the reamer coming into the hole at an angle. It's actually pointing downward. At least it is on my lathe. And without a floating reamer holder, I get a hourglass shaped hole. Anytime I ream a hole, if I use just a standard reamer in a drill chuck, 
I will get a hole that is hourglass shaped. And to avoid that, I use this, it's a modern magic chuck number two. And what it is, is it's got collets or adapters, I guess you'd call these, uh, that fit in here. And they come in multiple sizes. And I've got a couple shoe boxes of these inserts. And this happens to be a Morse taper number one to this chuck. And what it does is it's really just a, in my opinion, just a, a production quick change tooling that you would have, you know, instead of having to work a drill chuck key. But what this does is it has some slop in it. And I can quickly change out these couplings. And it allows this reamer to float enough to where I get a good hole. Now that's what I use and I can go anywhere from really teeny because of all these little adapters to get a whole bunch of those. Really neat. You can get these chucks really cheap. Um, I, don't, I think most people don't even know what they are but uh, you know they're not as commonly used now and I had this for quite a while before I figured out what to what I was going to do with it till I needed to ream a bunch of holes and found out that uh, my lathe didn't ream holes well with the drill chuck so I needed something that would allow the the reamer to self align and this seems to give me really good results at least uh, when I check it with pins it does and I'm really happy with that it just allows the reamer to not be rigid, and then it then it will naturally follow the hole that your your pilot hole. So that's what I use to uh, uh, ring my holes, and I think that's a pretty neat little outfit. And any of you guys that uh, are looking for a floating reamer holder, uh, as long as you don't have really excessive wear in your lathe, you know this seems to be adequate. At least it is for for my lathe. So that's pretty neat. I thought I'd share that with you guys. You know, I've had this tool for quite some time, and I, and I use it just occasionally. But when I do, it, it it's really nice, and it's actually really really quick. You, know, you these are set up for drills, taps, center drills. I mean, they're a complete array of sizes. You could really you know uh, run production or quick runs of parts. Uh, with these really uh, quickly. And that, that's really what they were designed for. But an alternate use is a floating reamer holder. Alright, another thing that was sent to me, which is a, an amazing gift, uh, is this uh, tool post. Now, it's not a, uh, an Aloris type. It's, uh, I forget the name, but uh, some of you guys will be familiar with it. Sent me the tool post, three holders, and the wrenches. There's Let's see, where's the other wrench that go with it? So, you your wrench for your tool holder and your wrenches for your locking your holder or your, yeah, your holder to the actual post. So, a great gift. They really look like they haven't even hardly been used. They're a little dirty, but other than that, I mean, none of the locking studs or rounded off at the end or I mean even the bottoms of the tool holders look clean so I really think it's basically a new unit that uh, that wasn't really used so I want to put this on my lathe I don't know when I'm going to get around to it because it'll take a little modification to make it fit um, as a lot of you know I run a four-way tool post uh, on the lathe and let's go over and look at it and see what kind of modifications it would take to put this on there and it look like it was supposed to be there. Alright, here's my tool post that I currently use. Just a big four-way. And I've never had any really issues with it, but uh, I would like to get a more modern modern uh, setup. But as far as working, this works fine. But I would like to, to change it up and use you know a modern holder. They're just so much easier to set your tool height and you know you can spend a lot of time adjusting tool height with shims and stuff and, and to be honest that kind of sucks 
Now, this lathe was damaged. I, I'm pretty sure this is not factory. Uh, I believe the top of this compound was damaged and broken, and they machined it off, and someone, and by the looks of it, this has been like this for quite a long time, probably before I was even born, probably way before I was born. So somebody come in, they put a couple pieces of steel on here, They've got some shims under here, which is not as rigid as it should be. I mean, this should be these should be one solid piece, as tall as they need to be, and not stacked with shims. And and uh, hopefully that person that done this modification, you know, spaced their bolts properly and stuff. But nonetheless, this is going to have to be modified. It's going to have to be repaired, at least to the best of my ability. And this tool post is kind of small. Not in its working height. It's actually the right tool post for the lathe as far as tool height. Um, it's it's right in the in the sweet spot. So, in order for me to use this and have it fit the lathe properly, I'm going to have to probably come in and redo this top. And I may, you know, just instead of using a T-bolt like you commonly use, slides in here and has the stud. I may just make a solid top plate and then just put a few bolt holes where I can have this you know, all the way out here to this area, to this side, to the inside when my lathe is uh, parallel with the movement of the carriage. Let me bring you around here, get you a little better view of what I'm talking about. Kind of dark back here. But I really want to be out on this corner because if you take a tool holder off, And put one on. I want the front of my tool holder to be really close to the front of the compound. If I was to set this centered, you can see I would have to have a lot of tool overhang to just compensate for the for how far this is set back. So I'm going to have to come up with a way to mount this to where I can mount this on the corner and then if I rotate my compound 90 degrees or whatever, I can come out and do and move it to this corner, but I'll still be able to rotate it 360. This 360 degrees, you know, anywhere between there, there, or there. So that's a modification you'll probably see in the future, um, and uh, I'll probably be doing that fairly soon. But a great gift uh, from a great viewer, uh, Darren. Yeah, and it's uh, really appreciated. It may be a little while before we get to use it, but we will. And I've got a smaller version of this, I'll show you in just a second, that I used on a, uh, a mini lathe, or not a mini lathe, but a much smaller lathe I used to own. Here's the little brother to this guy here. And I've had this for quite a long time, and it's packed in grease. That's the way it looks, or that's why it looks the way that it does. It's really a nice set of just miniature tool holders and a tool post. And I used to use this on a, I think it was a little, maybe a 8 by 30 inch little lathe I used to own that had actually sat right here on this table. And uh, that's been quite a long time ago. Um, but it's a great little tool post. And, uh, and I'm just holding on to this for when, you know, I get another lathe. I've got uh, uh, part off tool holders and three standard tool holders. Well, I've actually got two parting blade holders and uh, three uh, standard uh, three-eighths shank tool holders. So that's pretty nice. And I'm really happy to get these. And uh, this will give us a good, you know, job in the future to make several new tool holders. We can make a rack to hold them, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, so a great gift from a, from a great... Uh, viewer Darren and I really really appreciate it well guys that's about it I think uh, I really really appreciate the uh, the reamers tool seal and the tool post man those are great gifts uh, they really are and I and I recognize that I truly appreciate that and uh, you know not only will it give us projects to do in the future but it'll you know improve the shop some and uh, it could use it, so I really, really appreciate it. It's getting down into the, like, 
zero, it's getting down to zero at night or and sometimes even negative with a definitely a negative wind chill. And I think this morning it was probably you know three degrees. And uh, I've been heating this place in here right now for about four hours, and I've got it up to about 39 degrees, 38 degrees. It's cold, so it's making it real hard to get out here and do much. But by the time the place is warmed up, you know the day's over, and uh, and it takes forever for this big stuff to get warm. Can't wait to get this thing going and uh, get that tool post on here. That'll be a pretty neat little job. Uh, I really like the way that uh, you know Stephen Gottswinger and Robin Renzetti, and those are, you know, for if you're not familiar, which probably most of you are, but those are YouTubers and uh, they're, they're you know good guys for sure. Those guys are talented. But they did a solid tool post. They just eliminated the compound altogether, and uh, you know it's just one less weak link between your cutter and your work and eliminates a lot of uh, you know chatter and really stiffens the lathe up to where you can part off uh, much easier and stuff and I don't necessarily plan to do that with this one simply because the design of this lathe doesn't you know uh, wouldn't allow that easy because of the way that the cross slide is made it's actually you know it would not be easy let's just say that to make it a solid set of the graduations and stuff are actually made onto the, uh, it has a raised rib that is actually made onto the cross slide here, which would, uh, you know, take some crazy stuff to, to get to solid tool posts. So we we'll probably won't do that, but, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if you're not uh, familiar uh, with my Instagram account, uh, I posted it there. Uh, I had a shop intruder and, uh, you know, broke in here, you know, just knocked everything over, not everything, but a lot of stuff, climbed on top of my lathe and just kicked everything off into the floor. My metal drops cabinet or uh, shelf behind me, which is already messy, they made it even even worse. And uh, what it is is a squirrel come down my chimney, which is a tree rat, basically, uh, come down my chimney, chewed through this little plug up here. I got a little styrofoam plug. You may be able to see it, you may not chew through it, come in here and just run amok inside the shop. And uh, I come in here and I was like, you know, what the heck happened? And it was a squirrel. But the, the squirrel actually got out, he chewed his way out the bottom of the door facing. Right at the bottom, uh, right hand corner of the door, he chewed his way out. So he did escape and he, I'm sure he's fine, but that was pretty interesting. And, you know, I haven't had a lot of shop time out here, uh, just, you know, a lot of you guys know that I lost my little shop buddy, uh, Jibs. He was out here a lot. You know, he's so small you never see him running around, but uh, he was out here. And uh, he's pretty quiet too, so he was a, you know, a stealth uh, member of the team around here. And I really hate that I lost him. He was uh, 11 years old, so he was not that old for a young dog, or for a chihuahua. But, uh, you know, don't really know what happened to him, and I really appreciate the guys in the comments that, uh, you know, all the support and stuff, because it's tough when you lose a little, you know, a, a buddy like that. You know, um, they become part of the family, and it's almost like losing a family member. And uh, I did that video just simply to share it with you guys. Um, I really, you know, it was tough. It was tough, and, and I just wanted to, to kind of get that out there and, and let people know. You know, that uh, hug your little guys because you never know, you know, how long you got with them. Nothing's guaranteed. So enough of that. I really appreciate you guys watching uh, in the comments and stuff. I really, really care about you guys and uh, appreciate you. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Click on the little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.